They say a great garden begins beneath your feet, but most gardeners never realize how powerful their soil truly is. Every year, millions of gardeners spend hard-earned money on worm bins, fertilizers, and compost additives, yet overlook one of the most abundant free and natural soil builders sitting right in front of them, cardboard. That's right, plain brown cardboard when used correctly can attract and feed worms, boost microbial life, and turn poor soil into a thriving ecosystem teeming with fertility. And the best part? It costs absolutely nothing. So before you toss out that packaging from your last delivery, you'll want to hear this, because this humble material can do more for your soil than a bag of store-bought compost ever will. Let's dig into the secret science and the practical steps behind using cardboard to feed your garden for free. Most people see cardboard as waste, but to worms and soil microbes, it's food, shelter and structure all in one. Cardboard is made from pulped plant fibers, cellulose, hemicellulose, and lignin, the same organic compounds that make up wood and leaves. When it breaks down, it adds carbon to the soil, a critical ingredient in the carbon to nitrogen balance that fuels decomposition. Worms crave that balance. They eat the softened cardboard fibers and in turn, excrete worm castings rich in nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, and beneficial microbes. When cardboard sits on moist soil it begins to break down slowly, the lower layer stays damp and dark, perfect habitat for worms seeking shelter from heat and light. Within a few days, you'll see tunnels forming underneath, signs that the worms have moved in. Over time, the cardboard acts as a steady food source, decomposing at the same rate the worms consume it, creating a self-sustaining system of nutrient recycling. You know, a lot of gardeners just assume that if they want worm activity, they have to go out and buy worms by the pound. But, honestly, in most cases, healthy soils already have native earthworms. They're just often hiding out of sight. The real issue isn't that worms are missing, it's more about the lack of habitat and food for them. Cardboard, believe it or not, fixes both of those problems at once. When you cover bare soil with damp cardboard, you actually create this nice, shaded, and moist microclimate. That kind of environment really attracts worms from deeper layers up to the surface. Once the worms are there, they tend to stick around, feeding, breeding, and multiplying all on their own. So, instead of spending money on worms that might not even adapt well to your soil, you can just use cardboard to encourage the native species that are already thriving in your area. These worms are perfectly suited to your local climate and soil type, meaning they'll reproduce faster and work harder than imported varieties ever could. Not all cardboard is created equal. The best kind for garden use is plain, brown corrugated cardboard with minimal printing. Avoid glossy coatings, colored inks, or wax surfaces. These may contain chemicals that slow decomposition or harm soil life. Most packaging boxes from groceries, appliances, or shipping are perfect once you remove the tape, labels, and staples. Thicker cardboard works well for sheet mulching or no-dig garden beds because it lasts longer, suppresses weeds, and provides a long-term worm buffet. Thinner pieces break down faster and are ideal for layering within compost piles or using as temporary soil covers between plantings. Always make sure the cardboard is wet before applying it. Moisture softens the fibers and signals to worms that the feast is ready. There are two main ways to use cardboard as a worm attractant and soil feeder as a sheet mulch or as a buried layer. For sheet mulching, simply lay flattened cardboard sheets directly over your garden soil or pathways. Overlap the edges so no sunlight can reach the weeds below, then wet the surface thoroughly until the cardboard is pliable. Add a thin layer of compost grass clippings or straw on top. Within weeks, the underside will become a hub of worm activity, while the top layer begins turning into rich organic matter. For buried layers, dig shallow trenches between your crops or along the edges of raised beds, tear the cardboard into pieces, soak them, and place them in the trench. Now just add a bit of kitchen waste or some green material for extra nitrogen, and then cover it all up with soil. 
This method actually encourages worms to travel through the trenches breaking down the cardboard and leaving behind nutrient-rich castings as they go. It's kind of like installing an underground worm highway that, honestly, never needs any maintenance. Worms are pretty simple creatures, but their instincts are spot on. They're naturally drawn to moist, dark, carbon-rich environments where they can safely eat and breed. Cardboard just happens to provide exactly that, and as it breaks down, it releases mild organic acids and sugars that attract not only worms, but also beneficial fungi and bacteria. These microbes soften the cardboard even further, making it easier for worms to digest. As worms consume the cardboard, they mix it with mineral particles and organic matter, creating tiny aggregates that improve soil texture. This process increases aeration boosts water retention and prevents compaction, three of the biggest challenges in any garden. Over time, even hard depleted soil becomes loose, crumbly, and full of life. The magic of using cardboard isn't just short-term worm activity, it's the transformation it brings to your soil over time. As cardboard decays, it leaves behind a matrix of carbon that helps build humus, the dark, spongy material found in the richest soils on Earth. Humus stabilizes nutrients, making them available to plants when needed while preventing them from washing away during rain. In gardens that use this method regularly, you'll notice deeper root growth, fewer weeds, and a balanced moisture level even during dry spells. The cardboard layers act like underground compost factories turning waste into fertility year after year. With consistent use, you can eliminate the need for synthetic fertilizers entirely. Your soil becomes self-sustaining. One of the biggest mistakes gardeners make is leaving the cardboard dry. Dry cardboard does not decompose, and worms avoid it. Always soak it thoroughly before use. Another mistake is layering it too thickly without airflow or drainage. This can cause anaerobic conditions and foul smells. So, a single or maybe double layer is usually enough. And, uh, just remember to avoid using cardboard with heavy inks or those glossy finishes. When you use cardboard in your garden, you're really closing the loop between waste and growth. Every box that once delivered something to your home now, well, delivers nutrients right back to your soil. This is real sustainability in action. Not expensive compost bins, not imported worms, but just a simple act of recycling organic carbon where it truly belongs. You're working with nature, not against it, using one of the most overlooked tools in regenerative gardening. Healthy soil isn't built by what you buy, it's built by what you understand. Cardboard may look like trash, but in the eyes of your soil, it's treasure. It feeds the worms, the microbes, and the very structure of your garden ecosystem. Every layer you lay down adds another chapter to the story of living soil, one that gets richer, deeper, and more self-sustaining with each season. So, the next time you unbox something, don't throw that cardboard away. Lay it down, wet it, let it breathe life into your soil, you'll soon see the difference, not just in your plants, but in the living earth beneath them. And if you found this guide useful, make sure to subscribe to Soil Engineer for more field-tested soil wisdom, regenerative gardening methods, and proven techniques that help you grow abundance naturally. Share this with a fellow gardener who still buys worms. They might just thank you for showing them the secret hiding in their recycling pile.